day nine of training camp and although it's still the early running things are starting to settle in it's like the concrete it's uh, been poured out of the mixer and the foundation is really starting to set but um we're still you know early in because we haven't played a preseason game that'll happen friday for you saturday for me um and i'm looking forward to seeing really the second and third teams because we're not going to see the starters but um the lower um the lower part of the the roster is what i'm looking forward to seeing like guys um who are in their second years or um the rookies that are going to get some time that are um being pressed into duty but um we're going to see a lot of them and hopefully their growth over the course of the year so anyways let's get into it What's up, it's your boy Sitting Trying to come back at you with another analysis video that kid you not. That's my real name. As we always do, starting out with the game balls. So, Eagles training camp. Um, game balls given out to Jalen Carter. Um, he could take a leap in 2024, and as well as A.J. Brown. So, Mr. Consistent. All right. Um, A.J. Brown, you know, he's doing what he's doing. Um, just catching balls, man. And there was, a, you know, a very few of them. Um, not just thrown um, his direction, but, you know, just period. As Jalen only threw 11 total passes. Um, that being said, you know, he made the most of the work that came his way. And, um, yeah, man, he it's crazy. If he hadn't missed the last game of last year, he might have broken the record that he set with 1496 in 2022. And, uh, you know, he might have less yards this year, but be better than ever because he's faster, stronger, more focused, you know, finding new ways to get open and hungrier than ever. Um but yeah, the automatic route he has, like the comeback is his money. The out is pretty good. And the slant is just unstoppable. So I'm um, looking forward to seeing him um, hit on those again this year and seeing how deadly they can be in an offense that's actually some level complicated, complex, um, offers something uh, more than the surface value um, and, and it doesn't just skim the surface um, towards defense and stuff. Uh, I can't wait to see AJ sink his teeth into this, you know, this this iteration of the Eagles and see how um, they're going to attack and stymie and um, befuddle defenses. All right, the game ball on the defensive side went to Jalen Carter. Um, your boy, you know, I love how they said it, reminiscent of a J.J. Watt swatting balls down. It wasn't a tip pass. He made a concerted effort to get those, you know, meat hawks up and a pop, you know, knock that shit down. So, um and yeah, taking advantage maybe of Jalen, you know, his limited vision towards the throwing lanes. He's only you know, six foot, six foot one, six foot two, knocking on the door, six foot two, um, quarterback. So hopefully they can do that with taller quarterbacks like Josh Allen last year. Because I mean, it was it's been sort of a sorely missed um, talent skill. I know some guys used to do it the past couple years. Um, Fletcher Cox used to do it a few. I mean, he's done it a few times, but. Um, you know, just getting those passing lanes and knocking the balls down. And there's nothing def more deflating, you know, for a quarterback than to, you know, have those balls batted down because, you know, it's it's not, a, you know, the DB making a play on it. It's the lineman getting in the way and uh, making sure that he doesn't even get a chance to uh, have his guys make a play on the ball. So, um, you know, Jalen Carter coming forward from all, from all angles. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how that translates to the field this season. And hopefully, even with the uptick, he's, you know, he only played – 51% of the um, snaps last year, he can uh, be highly effective and probably not get run into the ground, but him and Jordan Davis, you know, they're um, looking to uh, be some forces this year. All right, let's get into the Jalen Hurts watch. How did Eagles QB1 look at training camp practice? Um, just more of the same, man. I keep saying this each and every day, but he's just been consistent, accurate. Like I said, he only had 11 passes to work with, but he completed, I think, eight of them. Uh, two of them were batted down. Uh, Marlon tweeted, Pelotu knocking down one and Jalen Carter, the aforementioned, knocking down the other. One. But he overthrew Johnny Wilson. And that was it, man. Just taking care of the football, has yet to throw a pick through nine practices. And he's just been um, this sterling. He's, he's making quick decisions to get the ball out of his hands, re recognize his playmakers, recognize where his help is, get, you know, his, his passing outlets. Um, you know, they're blitzing him. But um, Saquon Barkley, we'll, we'll find out later, he's been stonewalling guys. He uh, took care of, I think, Devin White three times and then Zach Bond as well making sure nobody's getting close to Jalen I think he was the best back in pass pro last year and um you know he had a down year running the ball but you know he's handling things and making sure no one touches his QB so um that's a highly underrated part because we've seen we're seeing Will Shipley struggle with that part of the game and that's something that rookies often struggle with you know coming into um the NFL um the pass protection part of the game 
and you know you can't be out there on third downs if you can't protect the quarterback and uh you know read inside out read your keys um make the guy avoid having to um you know sidestep you you know um making him run right through you and, and being, being able to hold up not just getting steamrolled like he kind of is by everybody <laughs> nicole dean had a pass at him um Devin white you know um i think some other guys jeremiah trotter you know sidestepped him so um something needs to work on but anyways going back to qb1 he's just been um turning into monster camp let's look at the final numbers that he had but he's it was 72.7 percent zero touchdowns but zero turnovers he's taking care of the ball so not putting it in harm's way, making sure that if his guys aren't catching it, then nobody is. All right, let's get to the final main juicy tidbit of an article. Eagles Twin 24 training camp practice notes day nine. I won't say day four. AJ Brown can run a slant. We know that it almost sounds like a children's book, but you know, it's pretty much, you know, uh gung ho, sure, fire. Don't know why I say gung ho, but anyways. Um uh, Arthur Juan, Arturo Ron Juan. I don't call him that, but anyways, guys that did not practice Chauncey Gardner Johnson with the shoulder, he's going to be out, you know, short interim, but it doesn't look to be serious. Paris Campbell missing his second practice with a groin injury. Oren Burke's been out since day one. Brandon Smith, third day with a concussion, you know, he has to be independently approved to come back. Um, Makai Gardner, third day with a hamstring. So, I mean, not to really worry about those, um, the, the latter three guys. Harris Campbell, not really overly concerned, but you know, he's not getting that work. And he looked like he had a stranglehold on the number three job. But Johnny Wilson popping up. And CJ Garner Johnson, obviously, he's a you know, big ticket free agent that came back to Philly. And uh, we're counting on him to uh, to do some work, man. You guys, he brings the energy. You know, Kobe, he has Kobe's number, number eight, draining some shots. So, you know, gives our guys out of a, um, a practice, or not practice, like a meeting. Limited practice, Steam back for another day, I believe. I mean, yeah, limited practice, but he, he joined um, team reps, uh, first team reps and second team as well, but Becton was ahead of him. Um, Austin Watkins' illness, I think something's going around because Cam Jennings had the illness, illness as well. Um, Sandy Brown, man, not on the field yet with the other guys running on the, um, the side field, but running full speed, not making cuts. I mean, because that's the, the last step, you know, being able to... Uh, decelerate <clears throat> make cuts um at you know full speed but he's coming along though looking fast i mean you can do that i had a tour at achilles and, and i was able to run you know straight forward but take making them turns man was hell all right tyler steen participated in 11 on 11 so like i said but um looking like he might have been leapfrogged by by um by beckton but we don't know because he's not fully healthy when both those guys are you know full tilt we'll see who's getting the majority of the snaps um yeah aj brown connecting with on uh, aj brown i mean <laughs> uh, sorry Jalen hurts connecting with, with aj brown on a bunch of slants slants nothing surprising there he looked crisp crispy out there nothing surprising because those guys just have a good good chemistry and uh devonta smith <laughs> he threw a hospital ball to devonta smith so uh something that might have gotten him sent there because the kobe dean could have taken his head off but you know of course he did the smart thing and you know didn't injure our future because i'd be pissed but another good day for Jalen Hurts, you know, thumb up tracker is four days in a row, five um, here, but four days on um, leading your nation. All right, um, Saquon, like I said, owning um, guys in the linebacker versus uh, running back drill. And one of the ones that don't do a bunch of, but he, he took out Zach Bond and uh, Devin White on all three of Devin White's attempts. So uh, Devin White, you know, he's gotten some good sacks in uh, the past against running backs, but, you know, um, he has been vulnerable to you know being taken out of a play being washed out not just by guys um his size like saquon but you know by guys uh like you know by receivers that who you know are smaller than him which is kind of a shame given his uh physical stocky build all right will shipley um he lost to ben van sumer who dusted him on a spin move to kobe nicobe dean who uh, out muscled him has been very positive and like i said jeremiah trotter stepped around him Needs to get better in that aspect or he won't be seeing the field. You know, just he'll be very, it'll be very transparent as to what the offense's intentions are when he's on the field. Ah, okay. Straight up just pass play. Um, straight up just outlet. But he, he does have a little play. He can, you know, chip and um, get out into routes, you know, go out late, delays, uh, do things to slow down the uh, um, defense's attack. But he just won't have a role in it, blocking them. But, and, it, and that could come up when, if they make an audible or something like that. So, 
All right, but Moro Jumbo had a tackle for a loss, man. He's just having a very solid camp. I'm happy to hear his name's popping up. Um, when he looked like a player that shouldn't have, shouldn't have been available in the seventh round. Um, let's see. Yeah, he'll play differently, play more than 68 snacks. Snacks. Snaps. Yeah, for him, he might be snacks. Anyways, um, Devin White had a pass breakup in the end zone and a pass intended for uh, Joseph Ngata. Yes, he's a second teamer or a third teamer. But, you know, it takes pride in his coverability, something he did with the Saints, and he definitely covered my, uh, Christian McCaffrey, even though he wasn't at his peak. Uh, he was de pretty damn good, had 1,000 yards rushing and receiving one year. And Alvin Kamara, who's known to be a uh, pass-catching monster out of the backfield. All right. Um, Isaiah Rogers, man. Take, you know, the pump fake, he's falling on it for it. You know, he tries to bait guys. You know, I get that. But, you know, at a certain point, you got to, you know, um, hold on to your keys and be accountable. And uh, not let Devontae Smith, you know, get right wide open in, uh, down the field. So, um, he's a gambler. I didn't even mean to do that, but they, they, I saw gamble and it triggered me to say gamble. But, uh, yeah, shut up, Jimmy. Um, Kenny Pickett and, and Tanner McKee kind of struggling. Who's going to take the number two job? I think we're in good shape because those guys are competing. Like I said, we should be slated to win some preseason games because between those two, um, we, sh we have a, um, I mean, a strong quarterback room. All right, Jake Elliott finally missing his first field goal and wish it on him, but missed a 58-yarder wide left and short. Um, cut him. He's been facetious, obviously, but he was good from 33, 36, 43, 38, and 28, which kind of like, you're like, oh, Mr. Automatic. But, yeah. Emergency snapper, I don't give a damn about that. So if you care, but you're not even watching, get at me. All right, the last bit of notes um, that I'd like to uh, double up on. Let's see. Um... Hurts, an 11-11 situation. Ripped a quick throw to Devonta for a touchdown. Read and coverage. Crispy route. Nothing much he could do about that. It's all good. But actually, this is the wrong article. So let's get into <laughs> the notes for today. Damn it. Sorry, this is the real article. I fucked up on the last one. Anyways, um, it was a long session. But kind of drawn out, and I know they're kind of ramping up towards the preseason game because it's on Friday. It's where we have four practices in a row. The most that we had last year, I think, was two. So um, just trying to change things up and uh, get guys to, you know, to buy into a new program. But you know, it's it's really um, a fresh take, and not really wanting to settle into complacency. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, the Rogers, I was talking about, I think, yesterday, but this is, again, him getting exploited. <laughs> um, on the slant route, he got, uh, Keely Ringo got beaten covered. So, good to see who these guys go up against. <coughs> but it doesn't matter with <coughs> Keely Ringo, Quinya Mitchell, who might be secretly our best corner. Um, I mean, Slay is pretty good, too. Um, it's, it's amazing. He's about to turn 34 this year. Um, let's see. Not a flashy day, but avoiding mistakes, man, is huge. Let's see if there's anything else to garner. So, again, um, six days for Rogers, five in a row against Keely Ringo's three. And I, I got to give the veteran the edge, man. I got to say that's where, you know, where it should be. Um, ninth day in a row that Devin White and Zach Bond were the first team linebackers. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I do have to say that, you know, maybe them not showing up. Um, Kenny Pickett and um, McKee, they both threw interceptions. <laughs> um, Kenny to Quinnar Mitchell in a drill that wasn't full full of force competitive, just bad throw. And then uh, McKee to Sean Stephens because that one was tipped. I mean, tipped by Sean Stephens, and then Andre Sam got the interception. And, hey, Stephens is making um, mistakes. I'm saying mistake. He's making mistakes. He's making some plays, man. And, uh, yeah, he's going against lower competition. Um, comparatively speaking, you know, he came from lower competition. But um, he's someone that should make the practice quite easily. All right. Um, with CJ DJ out, Avanti Maddox took some first-team snaps and also Bradbury um, took a few. But he filled in mostly for CJ because it was kind of sudden. All right. Saquon um, had a good run. I mean, just... I, people, I don't get the you know the point of him saying like he doesn't look good at training camp. You know, he, guys, it's fucking camp. It's not live action. You don't want him taking too many cuts and, and, and you know running trap tires right now. 
Um, let's see, Tottenham Hall, Moral Jumbo. Um, and Quinion Mitchell forced Hurts to slide <laughs> in the back for a sack. Nice nickel cornerback blitz. So I love, you know, he's a four, runs a 4 3 I can imagine him just handling some people in the slot this year, I mean, because um, the guy's quick, fast, you know, uh, has good size, is a good tackler. Six foot one, buck 95, running a 4 3 coming out of Toledo. So, um, you know, just, it, it's a luxury right now to have there. And, um, We'll see how that affects other guys like um, what's his name, Avanti Maddox, James Bradbury. You know how they you know get into packages because he's going to be on the field and you know if uh, things go uh, if he doesn't win the starting job on the outside and he wins the interior job, um, he can be a dime. He can be in the slot and uh, he can uh, switch you know on the outside as well when they you know maybe have uh, banjo responsibilities something like that. Tristan McCollum. Um, was in position to light up TDP, turn on Davis Price. And yeah, I like him on the practice squad as well. And just let him continue to marinate. Um, Jalex Hunt got a good pressure on on uh, Pickett by beating Max Sharpie at left tackle. He's out of position. So I'll chalk that up to that. Lou Nichols not looking good, dropping balls and fumbling. Eh. Brett Toff, he got some starts at, uh, I think, right guard. Um, but still, you know, has had a bad snap at center, but maybe looking better than last year. So anyways, we'll get up out of here. We have another practice, our last um, consecutive one before the preseason game. But hey, you're not even watching though. But I'm excited as all hell because I love talking about the freaking Philadelphia Eagles and I love uh, making videos about this team. So we'll chunk this is officially, but as always, as always, it's Fly Eagles. Fly and let's mother in go. Thanks for watching. Check me out at Centron, Centron Anime, Centron Life, or Centron Laughs, or other social media.